everything, every generational curse was broken, all because of the blood of Jesus. Hey, I don't have to have cancer. I don't have to have sickness. I don't have to have disease. It doesn't matter what my grandmother had. It doesn't matter what my father had. It doesn't matter what my aunts and my uncles had. All the grace of God has come to break me free. Tell somebody, this is my testimony. <laughs> yes, Lord. Let's continue to worship him together. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord?
singing and praise the Lord together. Let's dance this morning. Come on.
in this room this morning. Thank, Thank you, you for your glory presence. Thank you for healing, miracles, signs, and wonders, salvation taking place in this room as we worship you this morning.
against you. He so God's not against you. He so for you. He proved it. He sent his only son, not an angel, his own son for you. He wants you. He loves you. He loves you. When this word comes alive in you and you act on it, it'll break every chain. I don't care if it's been in your family for 500 years, it'll stop with you. And your children will never know any battles that you've had to fight because a new chapter will begin because you don't come from this earth. You're born of above. The devil can make a lot of plans, but as long as God's hands on your life, he can't carry any of them out. And you not only come through, you come through with a testimony and a blessing. Like Daniel, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There's no fiery furnace, there's no lion's den that can take a child of God out. Welcome everybody, RTC Pittsburgh and RTC Dallas, Fort Worth. We just want to welcome you to today's service. It's going to be a powerful one, so I want you to buckle up in Jesus' name. For those of you watching on Faith TV, you are also welcome. Let us know you're watching at RevivalToday.com. I want everybody to lift their hands up. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for every person in this place. I thank you that we will not walk out of this place the same way we came in. Thank you for a deposit from heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let every ear be open, every heart open to receive what the man of God has in store for us today in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people said, amen. amen. Please take a seat and watch the video announcements. Good morning, Revival Today Church. Here are your announcements. Revival Today Church Choir is meeting every Sunday in November, immediately following service in preparation for our Christmas event. Make sure you join us at 107 Patton immediately following the service. This Wednesday, we're hosting a marriage conference on Wednesday, November 29th at 7 p.m. at 107 Patton Drive. Whether you're married or not, make sure you come out and join us for this service. We're back for Spiritual Emphasis Weekend for the month of December. Join us this weekend, December 1st through the 3rd, as we have a healing service on Friday, December 1st, on Saturday, join us for our Holy Communion service. And on Sunday, join us for the main event happening 10 a.m. at Montreux Junction Sports Complex. December 9th through the 10th is a big weekend for us here in Pittsburgh. Make sure you join us for our Christmas concert. We will be welcoming back Kim Walker Smith to join us as we celebrate the Christmas season. Our Christmas concert takes place on Saturday, December 9th, 7 p.m. at Stage AE. Then join us the following morning on Sunday, December 10th for our very first Revival in the City at Revival Today Church. Also at Stage Another location change, Sunday, December 17th. Join us at the Rock Team Theater in McKee's Rocks for the main event. Fort Worth, Texas, these announcements are for you. Today, immediately following service, if you are interested in becoming an official member of Revival Today Church and you have not yet taken the class, join us after service for the membership class. Next Sunday, we're welcoming super special guest, Evangelist Tiff Shuttlesworth to the Fort Worth House. Make sure you come out December 3rd, 9 a.m. at the Lifestyle Christian Building. On December 15th, we're having our very first Christmas concert for RTC FTW. So make sure you join us on December 15th at 7 p.m. at the Lifestyle Christianity Building. If you're interested in being a part of the volunteer and serve teams here at Revival Today Church, whether in Pittsburgh or Fort Worth, make sure you let us know by visiting revivaltodaychurch.com forward slash volunteer. For any and all information on all things going on at Revival Today Church, visit RTC those are all your announcements. We'll see you this week at Revival Today Church. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be here this morning? Great. I just wanted to let you in, fill you in on where Pastor Jonathan is this morning. He is still in Angola, but he's making his way here and will be here tomorrow night. So for all the services that you, uh, Miss Chichi, just talked about, he's going to be a part of those services. Again, he gets back on Monday. That's tomorrow. And we just wanted to acclimate you with uh, Africa, and that's why it's 170 degrees in here. Okay, we just wanted to give you a little glimpse Okay, about what he's ha what's happening out there. This is him preaching to all of the pastors in the morning session. Look at that. 
Isn't that awesome? Just the pastors and leaders of the churches there. And that's the evening service. They didn't give me the amount of people that were there, but if I was to guess, like a million. Nobody knows the difference. So anyway, he just wanted me to let you know that he loves you. He misses you genuinely. He didn't say that like, you know, uh, facetiously or uh, sarcastically. He really loves and misses you. And he's very much looking back to being in the house. Can you say amen? Well, without uh, further ado, I don't know if that's even a thing. I want you guys to get up on your feet and welcome the man of God. He is a familiar face here at RTC. Brother Ted, Evangelist Ted Shuttlesworth, in Jesus' name. Praise God. Well, if you can give a man a hand like that, give Jesus a hand of worship. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. (laughs) Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to thy name, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There at the cross where my Savior died, there for cleansing. How many of you got set free and cleansed by the blood of Jesus? There to my heart was the blood applied. We're singing glory. I said we're singing glory. (laughs) Hallelujah. Singing glory to his name. Hallelujah. And all the singers left me. (laughs) Well, singing glory to his name. Well, glory, glory, glory to his name. Well, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. We're singing glory to his holy name. We're glory to his name. Well, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Come on, clap your hands, play it. And turn my mic up. Well, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Come on, sing glory to the holy name of Jesus. Glory to his name. Well, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory, glory to his name. Come on, clap your hands, sing it. Glory to his holy name. Glory to his name. Ora shalabaha. Glory. Glory. Well, glory to his name. Oh, singing glory to his name glory to the name of jesus there to my heart was the blood applied glory to
Hallelujah. Somebody shout Jesus. Shout his name again. If you love him, lift your hands and just for a moment give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Now, before you're seated, turn around and tell somebody, today is your day for a miracle. Tell them. Today is your day. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Glory. You may be seated. We welcome all the people that are here today. And uh, revival today is growing so quickly that it wouldn't surprise me that uh, there will be great works like this all over the nation. It's time for God to have a place where nobody puts a constraint on him. I've preached in some of the biggest churches in this nation. And when I'd go to go out, they'd hand me a little slip and they'd say, now this is how much time you have to preach. If you pray for people, this is how much time you have for that. And I always enjoyed standing and looking at them and then tearing it up right in their face <laughs> and handing it back to them. I said, did you ever hear the scripture? The word of God is not bound. So stop binding me. <laughs> One person said, well, if you don't do it, I said, okay, I'll see you. I left the building. I mean, I just walked out on them. Never went back. I hope they're doing all right. <laughs> but we're living in a day we need more of God, not less of God. And I have a word, I believe, from the Lord for you that are watching on Brother Raybert's brand new network, God Bless. I don't know if he calls it Faith America or what, but it's on Direct TV. And I know the network is called the Family of Faith, Faith UK, Faith Africa. It's faith everywhere. Amen. Without it, you can't even please God. Hebrews eleven six says. But we welcome you that are watching on DirecTV. And then our great sister church in Fort Worth. My nephew uh, sent me word last night. I was reading some of the instruction he gave me. I tore my phone up whenever I got, no. <laughs> and walked out of the hotel room. But um, you that are there in Fort Worth, I believe Brother Kofi's there with you today. Is that correct? So I'll show you who to cast the devil out of in a minute, Brother Kofi. It's probably in the fourth row to the right. <laughs> but this is the home church that God first birthed. First things are important, which means you're important. You're a part of God's plan for the greater Pittsburgh area and the world. Can you say amen? Everybody say this out loud. I have greatness on the inside of me. For the Bible says, greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. Therefore, I boldly confess, I have greatness on the inside of me because of Jesus Christ. I'm a beautiful person. The Bible says, he beautifies the meek. I'm getting more handsome every day. Amen. Beautify. That means he's making you beautiful. I don't know about you. I woke up this morning and I saw my father in the mirror. I thought, how did he get there? He'd been in heaven 13 years. But we're being changed, the Bible says, from glory unto glory. There's an active working of the Spirit of God in you right now that's changing you for the better. God never changes anybody for the worse, 
but he always changes us for the better. Can you say amen? And in your Bible, if you'd turn with me, please, or your device, I want to look at the ninth chapter of Luke. My nephew, Brother Jonathan, we love him. My son, Teddy, they've encouraged me to use the ESV, and I'm still praying about it. Amen. But I'm reading from the King James today. Luke chapter 9. And I want this to get in your spirit because this is the launching pad for every miracle that God ever performs. God has a miracle today for you that will believe him. Some of the greatest things I've seen have happened while I'm just reading my text. I was over in Breezewood, Pennsylvania a few years back and I was reading from the Gospel of Mark for that service, and I saw two women in the second row just talking, getting excited. And the way I, I was raised, my mama said, if someone else is talking, you don't talk when they're talking. So I stopped reading my text. I said, are you all right, ladies? One of them looked up, and they said, something's happened. I said, what's happened? She said, my friend was born deaf in her ear. And while you were reading the text about Jesus healing the deaf, she's telling me her deaf ear just came open and the woman was in her 70s. Can you imagine being 70 plus years of age, living your whole life with that particular problem in your body and just hearing the word of God? It brought a miracle to that woman that day. You remember that, dear? You were there. I said, where do you go to church? And they said, we're Lutherans. Oh, I said, that explains it. Amen. <laughs> How many know I was kidding? Let me see your hand. Amen. <laughs> All you Lutherans in here. Davy and Goliath, God bless you for producing that and putting it out for the world. Gee, Davy, you remember that? Amen. Look at the young people go, what? <laughs> Luke chapter 9. And this is a very powerful story. And it begins the ninth chapter. When you get home, read this for yourself. It begins with Jesus calling his 12 disciples together. And then it says, gave them power and authority for what? Over all devils and to cure diseases. When Jesus found 12 men that would go with him and walk with him. He said, you, you boys need something a little extra. I've called you, but now I need to give you power and authority. What for, Jesus? I want to give you power and authority over all devils and to cure all diseases. Can you imagine what those 12 men must have thought that day? If any of them had a big head, were a little proudful, they thought, man, I'm like Jesus. But the more you read the Bible, that's exactly what Jesus instituted. He was making his followers to become like him. And if you are a Christian, then you should be like Christ. And God is changing us from glory unto glory that we might be more like the Lord. Can you say amen? And then drop down with me, please. And I want to begin reading in the middle of this. Verse 28. 
And it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistening. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory. Everybody say glory. glory. Who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish. The Bible says at Jerusalem. That's not a happy thought, death. But on the other side of death is always resurrection. Can you say amen? And before God can use you, you got to die out. I've got to die out to ourselves. Until the only thing that matters is Jesus himself. When Christ is in you, then the hope of glory Paul said, is released in you by dying daily, which means every day you should have an experience of the resurrection glory operating in your life. You may get down. You may feel like you're under an attack. You may feel like something's oppressing you or depressing you. But I'm telling you, if you'll let that flesh die out this morning, there is a glory that's going to come on your body and on your mind. You'll leave here singing. You'll leave here shouting. You'll leave here with the power of God coursing through your body, quickening every part of you. You'll leave better than what you came. You'll leave with a greater touch of God than you've ever had. There is an anointing that's working right now for every one of you that are watching you that are here in this auditorium, you that are there in Fort Worth, I'm telling you, get ready for the glory of God to come upon you like never before. Raise your hands and say, Lord, I'm pulling down that glory. I need my own transfiguration. I need my own touch. I need my own blessing. God doesn't mind you calling on him. He said, if you'll call on the Lord, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things, even those things which you don't know about yet. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory. Talking about the glory. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory. You know why the glory is not working in a stronger measure in the church? It's because the church is asleep. But the Bible says, Awake thou that sleepest, and Christ shall give you light. The first thing that happens when you wake up spiritually, the glory begins to manifest and your vision changes. It's no longer staring at the back of your eyelids spiritually, but now your eyes are being quickened by the Holy Ghost to see the plan of God being unveiled in your life today. Every one of you, God has a purpose for you. God has a plan for you, and all you are is just one prayer away from that miracle. And so when you wake up by the Holy Ghost, ghost, the next step is you're going to see the glory of God manifested in your life. I don't know about you. I didn't come to just have church. I came to receive the glory of God in my life. I'm not content to just go with how things have been and to go along to get along. But friend, I'm telling you this morning, there is a hunger that's on the inside of this preacher to let you know I need 
more of the glory. I need more of the anointing. I need more of God. Hallelujah. If you feel the same way, raise your hands to heaven and shout, Lord, that's me. Shout, Lord, that's me. When they woke up, they saw the glory. It's time to wake up. The Bible says it came to pass as they departed from him, Moses and Elias. Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. That's the greatest understatement I've ever read. In a time, you're where the glory of God is. It's pretty good to be there. In fact, I'm going to say it's absolutely good. Can you say amen? Well, that's Peter. He's an old fisherman. Now he's got the Holy Ghost. Boy, he's thinking in his mind, this beats fishing. Mending old nets. Fighting the ocean waves. It's good to be here. That's right, son. Master, let us make three tabernacles. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. In one moment, he decided he was going to become the Assemblies of God, Church of God, and the Word of Faith. Let's build some denominations now. Historically, when you study the church through the ages, every time God would move with his glory, it wasn't too long after that, men begin to try to organize it. But you can't organize what God does. He is a free spirit. Can you say man? And he is beholden to no man, and man cannot control God. But God says, I want to control man. And that is the difference, the surrendering of our lives to the control of Almighty God. I'm preaching better than you're shouting, but I'm just reading right now. Let's build three tabernacles, Lord. One for thee, one for the first assembly of Moses, and one for the Elias Church of God. Why did he say that? Because he didn't know what to say. Not knowing what he said. Last night before I went to bed, I read the first 10 Proverbs. And one of the things that I get out of reading the Proverbs is, guard your words. Jesus said, by your words you're justified, by your words you're condemned. Not everything needs an answer. God can speak for himself. Can you say amen? amen. So while he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them. And they feared as they entered into the cloud. There came a voice out of the clouds saying, this is my beloved son. Now, he didn't rebuke Peter, but God said, hear him. We don't need another message from a man. What we need is to hear what God is saying. And when we hear what God is saying, the glory cloud will overshadow us as it did here in the Bible. Can you say amen? amen. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone, and they kept it close and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. Father, I ask you to add your blessing to the reading of Holy Scripture. I thank you for these wonderful people, these that are watching online, by television around the world, in Fort Worth in particular, but especially these that you've brought here in the Pittsburgh area to hear your word. I pray you'd anoint your servant to speak only what you want to be said. 
Hide me behind that beautiful cross that we might only see Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lift your hands a moment. That's the presence of God. I feel him here. Hallelujah. There must come a time in your life where you get alone with Jesus. God's been showing me this more and more as I'm getting older. We have time for everything, but we need to take time for him. In his presence and the fullness of his presence is the spirit of joy. We enter into his presence with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. And that word means literally entheos in the Bible is the word. It means your words under the anointing or the glory bring you into perfect union with God the Father. It is impossible to praise God and to sin at the same time. Try it, it won't work. The more you praise him, the more the power of the flesh has to loose you and the glory begins to sustain you. Years ago, when I was a little younger, these guys talked me into exploring caves underground. They called it spelunking. You can call it whatever you want. I'm not doing that no more. And we went down on ropes into a lower chamber and then proceeded to go through these underground caves. If you turned your flashlight off, it was so dark you could put your hand in front of your face, you couldn't see it. No reflective light. Absolute, utter darkness. I went with two, three preachers. And one of them, Brother Palmer, had already done this before. And he said, we're going to climb and crawl down to what they called the Bardangus Hole. I didn't care about no Bardangus Hole. I was ready to get out of there, folks. And he had a map that the University of Indiana, that some of the college students that did this had drawn. And I was hoping that map was right. Because after about 20 minutes of walking and crawling, I had no idea where I was. And we stopped to rest because there was a lot of physical work you had to do to get where you were going. And Brother Palmer said, I want to show everybody something. He said, this happened to me the last time I was here. And I want to know if it will happen again. Everybody turn your light off. I did, but I didn't want to. And Brother Palmer, you could hear his voice. He said, the last time I was here, he said, Ed, and Ed was with us. We just started singing to the Lord when suddenly we could see each other's face. And so he said, let's see if it works today. And he began to sing a song. I don't even remember what it was. Oh, yes, I do. How great thou art. Oh, Lord, my God. You've heard it. When I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. And you could feel the presence of God in that cavern underground. And as we sang it, suddenly I saw Jim's face. I saw David Blaze's face. I saw Ed Cranfield's face. And the more we sang, there was some kind of a glow that illuminated that cavern where we were crawling and I could see the stalactites hanging down from the roof. I could see the glistening of the water on them and we kept on singing. I discovered something, ladies and gentlemen, so many years ago and that is when you begin to praise God, there is a radiant glory that comes out of your spirit, man, and it begins to change the atmosphere that you are living in. 
You may not be able to see it with your natural eyes, but God's power is real. I believe we can sing until the glory begins to radiate out of every one of us until it overshadows us. Can I get an amen from somebody? It's time to come back to Christ. It's time to come back to the move of God. If this church is a church of signs and wonders, then there has to be the glory that comes first before any miracle, before any sign, before any touch. There is a place for the glory of God in this place right now. You that are watching your praise can provide the atmosphere where God will show up can I get someone to say oh thank you Lord or lift your hands and say do it again Jesus or raise your heart to heaven and begin to invite the glory of God to come upon you like you've never had it before I'm tired of church as usual I'm looking for the glory of almighty God to come upon us again can you shout hallelujah? Oh, the glory of the Lord. Praise God. Now, it's interesting to me who Jesus took with him to the mountain. He took Peter, he took James, and he took John. Three of the twelve got to go a little bit higher. Now, if God is no respecter of persons, then why were nine left behind? I'm convinced that God honors those who honor him. Not everybody is willing to go all the way with the Lord. God does not determine that. But ladies and gentlemen, you determine how far you're willing to go, how much you're willing to receive. And God doesn't determine that. Because if he did, he'd just force you against your will. But God has given us a will, a free will, to choose this day whom we're going to serve. You can feel it even as I'm speaking to you by the Holy Ghost. God is searching the hearts of every one of us. How much do you want? How far will you go? How much will you receive? God does not determine that. You determine that by the hunger that is on the inside of every one of us. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Can you say amen? amen. Then that leads us to the next thing. Why Peter? Why James? Why John? Peter was the first of the disciples to come to the conclusion that God was a miracle-working God. You see it in the book of Acts when Peter said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and how he went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Acts 10, 38. Peter got a revelation. Before the other 11 boys got it, Peter got it. Are you listening to me? Now, they had received power over all devils, and to cure all diseases. But until it becomes a revelation in your spirit, you cannot work the works of God. But once you understand that God is with you of a truth, and the anointing and the glory is working in your heart, then that revelation breeds expectation, and that expectation brings literally a manifestation, and the manifestation is the glory of the Lord. And so there's a direct 
contact and connection between the operation of the healing, delivering power of God in here right now and the manifestation of the glory. The more we give God praise and the more we worship him, then the intensification of the anointing takes place and miracles will begin to break out in this place on this television network in Fort Worth, wherever you're at. All you got to do is praise God. The devil shows up and says, don't you clap your hands to God. Go ahead and clap them. The devil says, don't you shout unto God. Go ahead and shout. The devil says, don't you dance before the Lord. Go ahead and dance. The devil says, you shouldn't run. Go ahead and run. Whatever the devil tells you to do, do the opposite that the glory might come on your body, might come on your mind, might come in your spirit. Do the opposite of what the enemy is trying to get your flesh to do. Yield to the Holy Ghost. Yield to the Spirit. Yield to God's power. Can you shout yes? Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm yielding right now. Say, I'm yielding right now. Peter represents the power gifts, healing, miracles, the gift of faith. But Jesus also brought James with him. James got the revelation of your tongue. James said, your tongue. Somebody said, you talking to me? I sure am. But when I point one finger at you, I got three coming right back. Your tongue is the most unruly member of the body. Then, by the time you get to the fifth chapter of James, he said, here's something God wants me to say. And he begins to prophesy about the last days that we're living in right now. Your tongue can be unruly or it can be anointed like the pen of a ready writer, the Bible says, to speak those things that belong to God in your future. I come to tell you this morning, no devil is going to determine your future. No demon power is going to tell you how you're going to finish up. The devil does not get to write the last chapter of your life. Are you listening to me? But your life is hid with Christ in God. Oh, hallelujah. I'm talking to somebody today. You feel like giving up. You feel like you're not going to make it. I come to tell you, you are going to make it. The anointing of God is on your life. May the glory overshadow you. It only gets better and better for the child of God. Shout yes, it does. Say yes, it does. James represents the utterance gifts, the tongue, the speaking. Tongues, interpretation of tongues, the gift of prophecy. But he also brought John. John, the beloved. He loved to put his head on Christ's chest. Love on the Lord. Oh, John, the beloved. But we find out God gave John the revelation about revelation. The first chapter of the Gospel of John. We see discerning of spirits reveal. The Bible says he saw the Christ. Then he saw Nathaniel. Then he saw angels ascending. Then descending. The fourfold nature of discerning of spirits. John got the revelation. Later he wrote a book. And they call it the Revelation of Jesus Christ. That gift was represented by John himself. Now here's my point. When the glory begins to move, the three operations of the gifts of the Spirit will be revealed in your life. Some of you are going to leave here today with your miracle. 
Others, you're going to leave today speaking in another tongue. Some of you are going to leave here today with a fresh revelation of what you need to do next. But whatever you do, when you see the glory and the glory overshadows you, these gifts of the Spirit are connected to the Holy Ghost himself. The Spirit of God himself is here. Oh, thank God. I don't know what you need, but I want you to wrap your faith right now around what is your greatest need and begin to call on God and say, Lord, I'm going to have everything that's in that Bible, everything that's in that book, and the more you begin to worship him, the glory intensifies. Are you hearing me? I'm talking about the glory of God. I said the glory of God. It cannot be church as usual. We need a visitation from heaven. We need something supernatural that only God can do. Hallelujah. Shaka. Mondo Rabba Salama. Monday, hey, hallelujah, the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord. He comes on Jesus. You preach about Christ. You begin to brag on the Lord, and the glory comes and confirms it because God will not be mocked. Hallelujah. He has a son, and he sent his only begotten son that whosoever will believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Whatever you need, that that life is in the glory. When I was younger, I was holding a meeting here in Pennsylvania, south of Harrisburg. We got there in a blizzard. They tell us next week we're going to get an Arctic blast. Good. It kills germs and it'll put Fauci out of business. Hey, at my age, I can't believe half the junk Americans fell for in the last couple of years. But I tell people I'm not brainwashed, I'm bloodwashed. Hallelujah. I trust God. <laughs> that was for free. Don't turn that television set off. I was preaching. And my wife drove down to this small town south of Harrisburg and a blizzard hit. I said, oh, honey, I, I, they'll probably cancel this meeting. But when we got there, there were five older women. I'm talking about in their late 70s, early 80s, with shovels, shoveling the walk in front of the church. I said, is this it? This is for GPS or anything. We're looking for addresses. I said, this is the church. And I got out of my car. I went over. And I said, what are you ladies doing? Now, that's the dumbest statement you could make. They're shoveling snow. But I'm wondering, why are they out there in a blizzard? Older ladies. And they said, well, our pastor said he's probably going to cancel the meeting because people can't get to church. But we've been praying for 20 years for a revival to come to this place. And we're not going to let it be canceled because there's snow. So our prayer group decided we'd come out. Talk about Pennsylvanians. This is how Pennsylvanians think. We're going to shovel the snow. They said, who are you? I told them, oh, you the man we've been praying for. And one of them said, look at him. Does that look like who the Lord showed you in prayer? She said, that's him. Amen. Now I'm feeling, I grab the shovel. I start helping out. Amen. We shoveled the steps off to the door and all the walk to the street. And that uh, night, we had church. And it didn't have any anointing in the service. I mean zero. I was praying the Lord could find the address. I didn't understand it. These women have prayed. But prayer is not enough. You've got to put works with your faith. That's what them girls was doing. I'll never forget this. On Monday, I said to my wife, it was close to Valentine's Day, if I remember right, dear. I said, I'm going over to the church. I'm not eating today. And tonight, you bring my clothes. I'm going to stay in that church and pray till the glory comes on this place. And I made up my mind that's what I was going to do. And so I went there in the morning, started praying. Knelt down on the front row, had my notebook in case God told me anything, my Bible open. 
when I looked up and I saw like some kind of mist or cloud in the back of the auditorium. My natural mind, I thought, well, it's so cold, a water pipe's broken, and it's being released in this warm side of the sanctuary. But as I looked, it began to get bigger, and it started rolling towards me. I had no idea what I was seeing, but I stayed right on my knees. Amen. If I had to, I was going to hide under the pew, but I wasn't moving. Now, whether it was an audible voice or not, I don't know. I, I don't know. Heaven will tell us. But I heard the Lord say to me, in the center section, ten rows back, will be a woman who was in an automobile wreck. Pray for her first, and she'll be healed of being crippled. Then the voice said, back to the right, under the overflow room will be a young man, legally blind. Pray for him next. And then I heard the third thing, 100. But God didn't tell me what 100 meant. But I wrote it down on a slip of paper and laid it in my Bible. My wife came before service. I changed into my suit. I went out. And you could feel a little of the anointing begin to flow. But I like it when it's strong. I mean when it blows your hair back. And a couple of you, it blows your hair off. But anyhow, <laughs> I stood to take the microphone, and the Lord said, have the board of this church come stand at the altar. So I invited all of the board to come. Two of them were ladies. The rest were men. And I said, I don't know why the Lord wants you here, but go back in that room and pray, and God will show you what it's about. They went back. We kept singing. You talk about, in my mind, I'm thinking, this meeting's over. What in the world is this about? And then those brave men sent one of the women back out. She said, Brother Shuttlesworth, we think we're supposed to give our pastor a raise. I said, that's it. Go on back. When she said that, the pastor over here, he started crying. If people were going to give me more money, I wouldn't be crying about it. Amen. I would be planning how I'm going to spend it. But he cried. Bless his heart. Then a man came out of the back room, slammed the door, grabbed his hat off a hanger, and stormed out of the church. After he left, then the rest of the board came down. And they said, Pastor. They called me Pastor. I've never been a pastor. Are you kidding me? If I had a church, I'd be down to one person. I'm not sure she'd stay, and she's my wife. <laughs> they said, the Lord said to give our pastor a $100 a week raise. Then he really starts crying. I said, look at this. And I reached in my pocket where I put that slip of paper. I said, what's the number on there? They said, 100. I said, you're right. The Lord said, give him 100 a week. And the pastor come over, he said, Brother Shuttlesworth, can I say something? I said, it's your church. Say whatever you want. <laughs> he said, I was going to resign the church after this meeting. To be here, I've had to drive a school bus for extra income. But last week, I failed my physical, and I lost that $100 income that helped my wife and I to stay and pastor these precious folk. Now see, that's a poverty mentality in my mind. But in those days, I just went with the flow. Whatever God showed me, I believed him for. But we have to be careful not to let the devil define our success by how much we have in our pocketbook. If God is for you, who can be against you? I know it's Thanksgiving season and we just finished giving him thanks. And we're getting ready to celebrate his birth. But somewhere in between is a balance for every one of you. Do not allow the economy. Don't allow these phony politicians. Don't allow this evil that's in our world to try to keep you from praising God and to receive the glory. Get your eyes off your trouble. Get your eyes off your problem. Get your eyes off of the things that men are saying. And get your eyes on Jesus. He is the 
the author and the finisher of your faith. When those men woke up, they saw the glory and they saw the face of Jesus. His countenance was shining. I come to tell you, there is no countenance that shines any brighter than the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Get your eyes on him right now. He has something for you. You ought to reach out and grab a hold of that glory. Let it overshadow your soul. You're not defeated. You're not going down to destruction. You are not going to have despair. But the greater one lives on the inside. And you're going to see God cause your life to become greater and greater and greater. There's a greater glory. There's a greater blessing. There's a greater touch. Come on, shout hallelujah. God has a greater for you. Shout yes. Hallelujah. God gave that preacher a raise. The next morning, the phone rings. And in that denomination, they have like a superintendent over all the churches in Pennsylvania. He called me. Me, I'm nobody. He said, I hear you're causing trouble in that church. I said, no, sir. We had a great meeting. And then I told him. After I had the ushers, I mean the deacons go out, I walked back. I said, who's the woman that's been in an automobile wreck? Her name was Ann Ch Cherokee, if I remember right. She stood up with a brace on. I laid hands on her and said, go in the bathroom, take it off. You know them ladies, she ain't waiting. She unfastened something, pulled it right up out of her dress and waved it and was healed by the power of God of a crippling problem caused by an accident. Are you hearing me? I'm talking to somebody here this morning. You tell me what your problem is. I'm going to tell you about Jesus and the glory. You tell me about what's bothering you. I'm going to tell you about Jesus and the glory that will overshadow your problem. Are you still listening to me? I tell you, if you'd lift your hand and say, Lord, here's my antenna. Hit it with the power. Hit it with the glory. Something will go in your spirit. God will resurrect your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then I walked over to the overflow. I said, who's the boy? And then I saw him. Glasses as thick as the bottom of old Coke bottles. His name was Larry. I had him stand up. I said, take them glasses off. He said, I won't be able to see. I said, that's the whole point. He took it off. I laid my hands on him. And Jesus gave him perfect sight right there in the, in the, in the face of opposition. Are you listening to me? So I'm telling these testimonies to the district superintendent what God was doing. He said, well, all I can tell you is they want you to go meet with the board this morning. Get yourself over there. I go over, and we're waiting for the guy that stormed out. I still remember his name, Eisenhower, but he was no general. Are you listening to me? He wasn't even a book private. And then he comes in, and as he starts to talk, the Lord says, tell him he's a lying devil. So I said, you're a lying devil. And I had a vision. I saw his wife with a kerchief around her head. And he was telling her what he was going to do to get rid of me on the way to church. I, it was like I was in the back seat. I said, your wife can prove what you're saying is a lie. She's here in the building. She's not here. And someone said, yeah, I saw her over by the water fountain. I said, go get her. They brought Sister Eisenhower in. Bless her heart. I said, your husband said he was going to get me this morning. She said, yes. I turned around. And I said, you foul devil that binds this man. Come out of him in the name of Jesus. And he fell right on the cor carpet and began to writhe as the devil came out. This is how I started in this thing. It's not by my strength. Are you kidding me? There is a glory that will clean up every church. There's a glory that will clean up your life. There's a glory that will drive the devil out. He he gave them power over all devils and to cure diseases. And that same power, that same glory is here right now. If you believe it, raise your hand and give God the glory. Praise him. You that are on television before you go, I'm going to pray for the people, but I'm going to pray for you. You that are watching on direct TV, stretch your hand towards the television or your device. 
And now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command the devil to take his hands off of you and your family. If you've never asked Jesus Christ into your heart, pray this right now. Say, dear Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I believe, Father, you raised Jesus from the dead for me. And right now, sin's power is broken, and I am free. That's it. Then let us know you prayed that prayer. On your screen, there should be information how to get a hold of Revival Today ministry. And they will reach out to you and be a blessing to you. Everybody, you believe God's done something for somebody today, clap your hands and rejoice. Oh, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Lift your heart and just give him praise for a moment. Amen. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Say this with me. And mean it from your heart. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation to take us home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my god how great thou art come on sing it now then sings my soul my savior god to thee praise god how great thou art, oh, how great thou art. Sing it now. Then sing, my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. I'm going to pray as he plays that softly. Is this your wife, sir? Maybe you could hold your son for a minute. I want to pray for your wife. Whew, glory. Come here, young lady. We have great ushers. Now, you are in Fort Worth. Get ready. How old is your son? Four after Christmas. No other children? Two that are older than in the back. Older in the back. Then it was this one. A problem developed in your body after you had him. Isn't that right? Yes. It's not healed back up. 
And sometimes you can feel discomfort because of it. Isn't that right? Yes. Now, if Jesus were to show me something, that the glory might heal you in the lower part of your body, you'd receive it. Yes. What would you do if every scar disappeared? Would you believe God did it? Yes. And I don't have x-ray eyes, but the Lord's healing your wife. You believe that, sir? Amen. Now, you don't look at me just a minute. You can cry later like the pastor I preached about. <laughs> this is a wonderful thing. You don't associate the two, but the problem you feel in your hip had to do with how you favored your body after his birth. And what it did, it wore on the hip more and more until now that pain is there and problem. Okay, yeah. And you know you have that. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know unless the Lord showed me right now. Yeah. When I was a boy, Jesus came to me in a field just south of here and gave me this gift. He told me I could know what was wrong with people than he, the Lord, by either miracles or healing, makes the people whole. But now you're starting to feel it in one of your knees so that if you stand too long, your knee almost feels numb. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good so far? Yeah. The plot thickens. God's on you. He's got it. Everybody say, God's got it. I pray for you right now to be healed from the birth of your last child. I'm not going to ask God to heal the hip socket and the ball. I'm asking to give you a new one. That would be a creative miracle. Then the knee will get stronger. I lay my hands on you and release the glory into your body. Whew, glory. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Someone say, all glory belongs to the Lord. Can you help her back up? Amen. Sometimes two are better than one, ushers. Twist, you'll see that your back's already released from that tightness. Twist your hip. Put weight on that hip that bothered you. You should feel a loosening. You do, don't you? Mm -hmm. yeah. Command you never to be crippled. Receive it. The Lord fixes that. That was a Holy Ghost surgery. Amen. Whoa. Had to stitch her back up. Amen. Glory. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation to take us home, what joy shall fill our heart. Then I shall bow, you're going to bow in humble adoration and there proclaim oh my god how great thou art is this your wife your mother you look young either that or you've been worrying too much stand i'm going to pray for your eyes and i'm also going to pray for your bones see i'm going to say this and everybody will understand what i'm saying you're too young for this it's time for God to make you whole. You too are feeling that problem coming in one of your hips, as well as the back, and then right here in your neck area, in these bones here. Yeah. Goes into one of your shoulders. Pretty good so far? Pretty good. Would you like to keep your arthritis or give it to the Lord? Give it away to the Lord. Then never say what I heard you say in the vision I have this arthritis. No, you don't. Jesus gave you power to cure all diseases, including arthritis. Amen? One eye is worse than the other. And so sometimes it bugs you because it comes and goes, the vision. But the Lord's going to heal you today. You believe that with me? Your blood needs a touch. The marrow is the blood factory where white cells and red cells are made. 
When the marrow is not working like it should, white blood cells, they what? Battle an infection. Red blood cells carry oxygen. The Lord shows me he needs to balance out your marrow so that you don't feel tired all the time, even though you just wake up. And that you have the energy come back to you. You believe it? I believe it. Lord, heal the bone marrow. Let the red blood cells be the right amount with oxygen. The white blood cells destroying all infection. Now I curse arthritis in her bones and body in the name of Jesus. And I ask you to touch her eyes. Glory. Let the anointing do it. Let the anointing do it. You like horses? You have one? Huh? I had one and I have. I work with many. And you work with many. Yeah. Well, you won't have to cheat to get up on the horse anymore. Okay. The other day you had a hard time getting up on it. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that right? That's right. And you remember what you prayed when you went to get on the horse? Lord, help, help me. me. <laughs> well, he just did. Amen. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. Come on, sing it like a choir. How great thou art. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, how great thou art. Then sings. My soul, my Savior God to thee. Lift your hand to heaven, he's here. How great thou art. Oh, yes. How great thou art. I'm going to pray for this young woman here. Lift your hands. The glory is getting stronger. Look at me, please. Hallelujah. And when they fastened their eyes upon him to receive the anointing, demonstration means you got to see something. Isn't that right? I have not seen, ears not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for them. I'm going to pray one prayer and it'll fix legal problems. Amen. 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 And you feel like you're getting ripped off by a lawyer. Things keep changing. All of the thinking will change. Everything's working in your favor. Jesus will be your lawyer. You came here wanting a particular thing, but in the natural, it looks like it's not working what you dream to do. Yes. And you hate the fact you're being drawn this way when you feel like your career, your call is this thing. See what I mean? So you're at a crossroads. The Lord's going to open up the right path. Where are you from? Not now, but where did you come from? Texas. Texas. Great state. I used to have an office in Tyler. You know where Tyler is? Huh? Mansfield, Arlington. Yeah. The Spirit of the Lord has brought you to where you're at now but you shall not miss it. That was what God put in my spirit. You shall not miss it. Everybody sees you're a young person, but the problems that are starting to develop, God's going to give you strength. To you, you can go days and think nothing of it. Then you feel this catch or something, and you say, I need to exercise. I need to work out. You think like that. Isn't that right? That's why you're getting those new workout shoes. <laughs> Did you already get them or are you pricing them? <laughs> They're expensive. I command healing to come. Jesus be her lawyer. 
and help the woman. When you have a relationship and it doesn't end right, there's a hurt that comes. Jesus will heal your heart. God has something better for you. Amen? That's all I'm going to say over the mic. Receive it. In Jesus' name. Stand, please. You got some nice tattoos. Your cup runneth over. That's how I drive. My car runneth over. Don't blame me. <laughs> Lift your hands. There's an infection that comes on you from time to time, especially in your jaw, around your uh, teeth. Isn't that right? Yes. When I walked by you, I was just letting the glory drive the infection out. You too feel like your heart's been broken. And you're asking God to heal that. Isn't that right? Yes. The problems that your mother had, and even grandmother, shall not come on you. Thank you, Lord. Because you're starting to notice the same symptoms like your mama, your grandmother. Isn't that right? Yes. And you even ask the Lord, I don't want this. Take it from me. Yes. To the point your mother got where she could barely get around. Isn't that right? Yes. And in your mind, the devil's painting a picture. You're going to have to have a cane. Then you'll be on a walker. Then you'll be sitting with no one to help you. Isn't that what you've been seeing? Yes. Now, spirit of infirmity that cripples the family, come out of the girl. I command you not to remain. May the Lord Jesus heal the woman. Everybody say, may the Lord Jesus heal the woman and make her whole. Glory. Just lift your hands. That's the anointing. It's getting stronger. If I go down, somebody pick up the mic and keep preaching. Glory. Keep preaching. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You single? You know her? Sister. God's going to help you with your finances, both of you. Take my hand. You ready for the Lord to help you? Yes. Who's this young man I see? Do you have a son? Do you have a son? Stand. I just saw the young man in the spirit. Now, your biggest desire, can I switch to her for a minute? is for his schooling and you live your life that he might do something good. Isn't that right? Yeah. But you keep getting a bad report and you say, oh God, touch my boy. Can God do it? Yeah. He's just young. Yeah. <laughs> but you're a real mama. Oh God, touch that boy. You have three groups of bills. You've put some that are too much. You said, Lord, I want to deal with these first. So you have two back bills. Isn't that right? Yeah. One has to do with power or electric. Isn't that right? Yeah. Then you have a middle bunch of bills. And you're figuring, how can I take care of all three of these categories? Yeah. You wrote with a blue ink on paper what you call your plan. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. I don't know if this is a refrigerator, but it's like you taped it or put it up on a door to remind you. Then you laid it down on a, like a brown wooden, I don't know if it's a desk or an end table. But the other day you were looking for it. And you say, where did I put that? Yeah. <laughs> because you know the Lord gave you a plan. Yes, he did. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. You have some nice magazines for when you get the house you want. You've been looking at different rooms, things like that. Isn't that right? Yeah. Do you know where those magazines are? No. 
They're on the corner. You keep them on that. I don't know if it's a reading table or brown table, but there's stacks of. Huh? It's a TV stand. Go through those magazines when you get home. That's where your plan is. It got tucked in there. Yes, sir. Now I cancel your debt in the name of Jesus. I pray for your son to have a great future. Ho! Tika Pando Rabaha. You feel that? That's the glory. Now, look at me. You're just a young lady. But you have one of your ears that's starting to give you a little bit of problem. Isn't that right? Yeah, my right ear. Your right ear. The right one is the right one. See, what this is, when God demonstrates his power, this precious man, he can't leave here and say there's no God. He say, wait, what am I seeing? It's scaring the devil out of me. Hallelujah. Well, he's not got a devil. He's a good fella. But see, God plans this so you can see it, that you'll never doubt Jesus is alive. You get it? All right, take my hand. The devil tried to kill you, tried to destroy your life. Can I help you? Huh? No, oh, he's okay, mama. Are you the mama? Figures. How old are you? I'm going to believe God that you get your own place. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command your body to recover from this attack and for the Lord to cleanse your bloodstream. No more addiction or problem. Go from him now in the name of Christ. Whew, glory. Glory. Look at me. The other day you thought like giving up. You were thinking, how do I get rid of myself? <laughs> Stand up. I'm going to cast the spirit of suicide off of you. Woo! Come out of him in the name of Jesus. You shall not have his life. You're free. You should feel better. Amen. Now get in this church. Learn the Word of God. They have a Bible training center. I'll even pay for you to go if you want. But the more you learn the Word of God, you shall be strong. Great man. I may believe God will heal the woman. We all heard her say her right ear, but when I went to lay hands on her, she's also having like a buzzing noise in the other ear. So both need a touch. Yes, sir. But you've lost a percentage of hearing. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Did they check your hearing, how much you lost? Uh, no, not yet. It's, it's a ruptured eardrum. Ruptured eardrum. So it's almost like deaf. Yeah. Do you hear my fingers? Jesus. Don't just heal it. Give her a brand new eardrum from the parts department in heaven. Put it in her. Hold your glasses so I don't mess them up. In the name of Jesus, brand new eardrum. Thou foul deafness that came as a result of a ruptured eardrum. In the mighty name of Jesus, the head of the church, come out of that ear. Open for the glory of God. You should hear me good now. What happened? She's crying, but they're tears of joy. Say what I say. Amen. Amen. I hear. I hear. I hear well. I hear well. It's better, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> now, thank God for the little bit the whole way home. Hallelujah. Now, I'm to you. I'm going to pray for you. You ready for the Lord to touch you? You have one habit that the devil keeps using to mess up your faith. You've said, Lord, if you could take this from me, I believe I could serve you. Isn't that right? Yeah. Then I take authority over this unclean habit, cast it out, phew, be set free. Phew. Glory. Glory. 
you're going to be all right. That's the anointing. You feel it on you? Lift your hands. Receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. She can dun, 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 dun. Receive the glory. Receive the glory. Begin to thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. And then there's a bonus where you had a little bit of problem in your knee. Isn't that right? So that when you move it, it's like something catches there. All right. Kneel down. Back up again. It's all right. I got you. Do it again. Put pressure on that knee. One more time. It's all right now, isn't it? Command you never to lose it. Everybody lift your hands. The presence of God. Presence of the Lord. Glory. 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 You go to this church. Lift your hand to the Lord. I see over your head what I would call the ministry of helps. Where you start is not where you're going to finish. But you still got to start. Did you say you go to this church? <laughs> Talk about short-term memory. <laughs> Sir, your blood needs a touch. I assume you go to a doctor from time to time. No? Wrong assumption. Are you his wife? Beautiful. <sighs> Hallelujah. I command the blood to be made whole. In the name of the Lord. Stand, please. Glory. Glory. Everything's going to be all right. God just got in your finances. Worry just left your wife and leaves you. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory. Put your hand on your chest. Did you used to smoke? Are you still smoking? Thank God you quit. <clears throat> you keep feeling this in your chest here. And you just think it's like a cold. Right? Mm -hmm. I command the spirit of cancer to come out of your lung. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Be healed. Someone say be healed. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. <laughs> Glory. 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 People have asked you about being in a position right Amen. but you say well I'm not political I don't have that kind of skill Amen. take the position we need Christians in place hallelujah glory someone say glory you must be happy to have a young mother yes. makes you look older hallelujah <laughs> lift your hand that's the anointing what I do, I just keep moving in the spirit till it lifts off of me to do this. Believing that the manifestation brings a greater glory. Someone say a greater glory. Phew, hallelujah. You go to church here, sir? When you can, stand, please. The anointing's on you. If I go down, you catch me. You put a strain on your body. Yes. And it bugs you because you were trying to get in shape. Yes. You pulled some muscles. I have. And you feel it in your stomach. Isn't that right? Yes. In fact, on one place in your stomach, it's a very sore place. 
And sometimes you feel it. Oh, man, I got to get back working. But I command no hernia to break forth on your body. Jesus' name. Prove this to him, Lord, that he might serve you. Now, I'm going to deal with this tormenting spirit. For some years, you've believed there's a plan against America but you see yourself caught up in it too and it makes you angry. Yes. I'm not saying you're wrong, but I'm just saying this is what you've believed. Mm -hmm. Some call them conspiracies, but hey folks, there's a real devil out there. Isn't that right? Yes. But recently, it's hard for you to sleep because you're thinking, what, what is this? What's coming next? What is this? Huh? All the time. I pulled the spirit of worry off of your brain. And I say from the Proverbs, he gives his beloved sleep. He gives his beloved sleep. Now, if you'll read the Proverbs, you'll find out the wicked shall perish, but the righteous shall be preserved and kept safe. I build that wall of safety around you and everybody that wants it. Lift your hand. This is a work of the Spirit revealing things. Ho! In the name of Jesus Christ, you tormenting devil, go from him. Never come back. Never come back. Lift your hand. We're just about there. Pew, glory. See, here's what I've learned. What God does for one, he's doing for everyone. Isn't that beautiful? You go to church here? You? You related? Hey, I have that chair a minute. I have to do an interview. Everybody look this way on the screen, however you do it. What's your name, sir? Uh, Dre. Say it again. Dre. I like that name. Dre. You a rapper? <laughs> I didn't think so. Now, he looks sort of what we call slight, but this man's a fighter. You cross him, he'll launch fists at you before he gets there. You've been warned if you're ever pulled out again, you're going to have to do some time in jail. Isn't that right? When you were a boy... The devil attacked your home. You grew up without what you needed. Yeah. You have resentment in your heart towards your father and even your mother. You thought, if I could get a hold of that guy, I'd smack him right in the head. Yeah. You dream about smacking him in the head. <laughs> but it really ticks you off. I'm going to set you free from this anger, but also abuse that you suffered as a young boy. That's why you fight so hard. You made up your mind. No one will ever abuse me again. Amen. You should never be ashamed. Always be glad that God made you who you are. What do you do for a job? Actually, I start my new job tomorrow. Tomorrow. What's it going to be? I work at Sheets. Sheets. My grandchildren's favorite place to eat. And where you can get a $1.99 gas over Thanksgiving. Everybody lift your hand. This is healing, but it's a little different today. But I don't mind. Because this man's going to be powerful. Hallelujah. Now, you're going to feel something loose you. Don't be afraid. I'm going to take that spirit of abuse, which is a, de a devil that comes on you when you get angry. I pull it out by the anointing of Jesus Christ. Go from his body. You, sh you felt that, didn't you? Yes. Did you know that was a demonic power that made you mad? No. 
You just felt it go, though, in your stomach. Yes, I did. You're going to be all right, Dre. Thank you. I command the devil never to come back in him. Pray this out loud when they say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. That you took me in. That you took me in. When everybody else rejected me. Everybody else rejected me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For showing this man. For showing this man. My life. My life. I will not go to prison. I will not go to prison. I will never injure another. I will never injure another. I'm going to become. I'm going to become. A Holy Ghost preacher. Holy Ghost preacher. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Shikata Bandorabaha. Receive the Holy Ghost. Go ahead, speak it out. Those are the words of the Spirit. Kita Bandura Bandehi. Shikandura Bambanduraha. Mindura Bambandekia Tapoto Roma de 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 he. Shikarabandoha. Rambadaha. He's speaking in tongues that he got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord. Then sing my soul, my say. And I command you never to lose it. Oh, how great thou art. Go ahead and worship the Lord. The interview is over. How great thou art. Come on, stand on your feet, everybody. Get a new t-shirt. Hallelujah. How great thou art. Do you go to church here, sir? I, I release the anointing in your body. You look like you could whip everybody in here. You have a torn muscle in your body that stays sore. I command it to be healed. Glory. Glory. Is this your man? Husband? Woman? Wife? I'm talking to you now. He's no woman. I'll pray for your eyesight later. Look at me, buddy. God's hands on you. Everything's changing for your good. I release the healing anointing. Go right through your body. You shall recover all. You've lost some things. Look at me. I'm talking about possessions. Things that were dear to you. God's going to restore Things are coming back. I pray a blessing over you. Like if your father gave you a pocket knife and you couldn't find it, may the Lord help you find it. That's what I'm talking about. That kind of thing. Things that belong to you. Through family, but more importantly, through Christ. Don't let anybody tell you you'll never achieve what you believed in the beginning. You're going to go beyond it. You'll go beyond it. Hallelujah. Beyond. I pray for your sinuses. Also your sense of smell. Sometimes you don't smell things that... They always tease me because of that. Huh? They always tease me because of that. They must be children. Now I have grandchildren that tease me. How long have you lost your sense of smell? Uh, More than a year? How long, kids? Probably, probably a couple of years. Probably three years. I command the growth in the back of your sinus passage that blocks your ability to smell things. Dissolve under my hand. <laughs> Glory. Anybody have like one of those perfumes that you... Squeeze it, atomizer. If a man raises his hand, I'm going to slap you. Any ladies? You got one of your personal lady? 
Yeah, you do. And I'll pray for you next. Hallelujah. Man, it's like the kitchen sink. <laughs> Jesus, help us. Thank you. Yes. All that to just show you your smell came back. I command that growth never to come back. Thank you. Amen. Lift your hands. This is your wife. These are your kids. Oh, my goodness, sir, you're outnumbered. Son's upstairs. Go check and make sure he's okay. Amen. Kasanda boto de boko raha. Glory. Glory. I command the bones in the bottom of your feet to also be strengthened. No bone spurs. Amen. What's your name? Maylee. Maylee. Maddie. Maddie. Mia. Mia. Mia, Maddie, Maylee. Maylee, 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 Maylee. Those are beautiful names. My dad named all of us boys with T's. Ted, Tim, Tiff, Terry. <laughs> oh, man. Lift your hand. The Spirit of the Lord's on you. That must be a Pennsylvania saying, because I don't recognize it. Kadingo <laughs> porobaha. A deeper spiritual experience for her. Lift your hands. Are you in college? Where at? Bowling Green. Bowling Green. Yeah, I know where it's at. I actually was on radio there for many years. Monday through Friday. I see that you're getting ready to make a decision. You don't want to talk to your dad or mom about it. So the Holy Spirit will talk to you about it. If you go this way, you'll be blessed. If you go that way, you'll be blessed. Because the blessing's on you and not on the direction that you want to choose. Always understand that. The blessing's on you. You believe it? Is that good advice, Dad, Mom? No matter what happens, the Lord works with you. When you were born as a child, there was a problem, a little problem in your blood. And uh, I think doctors probably told you either she'd grow out of it or she'll be all right. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That goes into your bone marrow. Makes up the difference. Hallelujah. The kidneys didn't cause it. It was from birth. It affected the organs of your body, but it's in your bone marrow. Just like I preached a minute ago. You'll have the right amount of white blood cells, the right amount of red ones. You should be perfectly normal. So you're the one that's the jokester in the family. <laughs> Lift your hand. You have a good spirit. Are you in high school? Yeah. What grade? I'm a senior. Would you like to go back again another year? No. Then God will have to help you in your math subjects. Isn't that right? <laughs> Calculus, analytical stuff, all that stuff. You got me when it gets to that. Lord, give her an anointing to do the math. Because you can see, Lord, she don't know what she's doing. That's her lowest grade. Pretty good? And then this boy, leave him alone. He's not the one. Hallelujah. You know who I'm talking about. You know what I did when my daughter came home with a boy I didn't like? 
I brought my shotgun and started cleaning it in front of it. True story. And then I said to the boy, does this look clean to you? I've never seen him since. But God's got a great life for you. Glory. You happy? Yeah. Glory. God heals even heart when things don't seem right and you get hurt. He's the healer of the brokenhearted. Did you ever hear that? Be healed. Amen. You happy to be here? Yep. You should be. How you doing, buddy? Good. Is this your husband? Yep. He's all right. I was raised in Pennsylvania, so I spot them quick. Isn't that right? That's right. Either a nut or they're not. <laughs> You have problems with low blood. Lord's going to touch you. Bring it up to the right levels. I command weakness, fatigue, and even uh, sometimes a little uh, lightheadedness to go from you. In Jesus' name. You're a good couple. Amen. One of your eyes is being touched today. Don't buy into this. Well, when you get older, your eyes change on you. Don't believe it. The Bible says that the Lord God forms the seeing eye and the hearing ear. Glory. Strength in that eye. Who are you? I'm Sarah. Any relation to these folks? Friends. I had a friend once. <laughs> Glory. Glory. You've been accused of things you didn't do. People have spoken against you. The Lord will vindicate you. Glory. Someone say glory. 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 How many feel the presence of the Lord? How great thou art. Oh, how great thou art. How many know God knows all about you? Then sings my soul. Will my Savior God to thee, precious Lamb of God? How great thou art. How great thou art. How many of you are here today and you've been struggling in your faith or maybe you say, I, I'm not sure that I'm ready to meet the Lord if I'm called into eternity. I just buried my mother a few days ago. But she was ready. How many of you want to know that you're ready? How many want to say, when I leave this auditorium, I want to make sure there's nothing between the Savior and me. Lord, speak to your people. Reach out now. How many of you say, Brother Shuttlesworth, there's not one sin between me and God. Let me see your hand. The Bible says these things are written that you may know you have life eternal. God, put them in a book. 
Now look at that. I'd say about 100 people didn't lift their hand. That's all right. That's why I'm here. To get you into fellowship with the Lord Jesus. How many of you couldn't lift your hand, but you say, Preacher, before I go through those double doors, I want to make sure my soul is ready to meet the Lord. Lift your hand up in the air and say, Lord, here's my sin. That's it. Just lift it and hold it high all over the auditorium. Look at that. Scores of people. Quick, with your hand raised, get out of where you're sitting. Come down here and stand in front of me. Come right now. You in Fort Worth. Power of God is there. In a minute, Kofi will pray for you too. Come on. Bring him over here. I said in front of me. Come on. Sing it as they're coming. If you raised your hand, you mean business. Come on. Oh, how great. Come on. Then sings my soul, my say. Come on. If you lifted your hand, you need to get down here. Thou art and sings my soul. We're coming to Christ. You right there in Fort Worth, if you need to get right with God, get down to that altar right now. Come on. Listen, I've been doing this too long. Some of you, your heart's beating fast, and you think, well, I'll get out of here as soon as he's done. Nobody is guaranteed tomorrow. I feel an urgency right now. There's others of you that need to come and publicly get things right with Christ. Why are these gifts of the Spirit important? They reveal the unseen presence of God. Then the Bible says, no man can do these miracles except God be with him. I tell you, God's with me. And I feel it. This is why I'm doing this. Somebody, you're getting your last call. And God had me come up this week just to minister to you. We're going to sing it one more time. I want you to take a step of faith. Come join these 15 souls. And we're going to get things right with God. Come on, sing it. And as they're singing it, if that's you, get out of your seat and come up here. Come on. Oh. I say they're coming. Come on, one more time. Then sings my soul. Jesus, Jesus. One last call. How great. Come 
Come on, they're still coming. You that are standing, stretch your hand this way. You that are here at the altar, they're still coming. I don't want to rush it. Let's, let's all kneel that just uh, came down here. Look this way before we pray. The anointing's on me so strong, I can barely stand. But I tell you, I've preached the word. This is my belief. I base it on the scripture. They're still coming. Yes. Kneel down here with us. Yes. Yes. Don't want to rush what God's doing. Whew, glory. Whew. Ladies and gentlemen, I've preached for so long. And I've seen so much, heard, that this is, pop, I would say, the most critical part of our coming together today. Ask yourself a question. Why would God reveal so many specific things about so many people unless he feels it's important for your faith? Paul said in Corinthians that because of the manifestations and demonstrations of the Spirit, our faith should stand. Where there is no demonstration like you just watched, there's nothing for your faith to stand on. But when an invisible God begins to reveal visibly the conditions, the needs, and His love for the people, your faith now has a foundation. It's in the power of Almighty God. I call it the glory. Everybody say the glory. I want you that are kneeling to think of it this way. God has a great rescue plan. And today, he reached down, despite all the junk you have to deal with, and he's saying, let me rescue you. Everybody say, God, please rescue me. Phew, glory. <laughs> How many know he's doing it? I want to lead you in a simple prayer of deliverance. When I cast that spirit of cancer out of that girl's lung, I'll guarantee you to her, it was just a discomfort, a pain in her chest. But you see, the Lord works preventatively and keeps us by his power. You know why you're at the altar right now? He reached down to rescue you. Pray this out loud, everybody. Dear Jesus, on this Sunday morning, I refuse to allow the devil to destroy my soul. I've made up my mind. All this junk that I deal with, it has to go. I ask you now, by the powerful Holy Spirit, to set me free from all doubt, all unbelief. Set me free. Birth in me now a pure faith that will keep me in this final day. I confess with my mouth, I'm through with sin, through with the devil, through with my flesh. I will serve the Lord 
all the days of my life. I believe you create within me a new heart and give me a fresh start on this Sunday morning. I'll not lose it, but I will serve the Lord the rest of my life. God, fill me with the Holy Ghost that I might be able to live this life. Thank you, Lord, for doing it for me today. In Jesus' name. Then everybody lift your hands and thank God in your own way. Thank him in your own way. Glory. Hallelujah. Just call on him right now. I feel the anointing. Glory. Jesus. Just lift your hands if you're glad about your salvation. Glory. You feel that? <laughs> Woo, glory. Take a little off of me in the hymn, Lord. Glory. Then sings my soul, my say to thee. How great thou art. Arabasatatakadaha. to God, everybody. <laughs> Glory. Glory. Now you that have been kneeling, stand up with a new anointing. Stand up with a new touch. Stand up with the blood of Jesus cleansing you, renewing you. Then shout like the Lord's coming any minute. Shout. Glory. Everybody say, I got me a new start. Everybody be seated. You can return to your seats. Lift your right hand. I'm going to pray one last prayer before you go. It's not that late. It's only 930 in Los Angeles, California. Everybody confess this out loud. I will have a fresh new anointing going into 2024. 
if you believe it, lift your other hand with that one and seal the deal. Say, it's going to get better for me. Glory. <laughs> ho, 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 ho. Ha, 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 ha. Now pray for about 60 seconds for the blood of Jesus, angels to cover, protect Pastor Jonathan on his way back to this region. Just pray for the next 30, 60 seconds. I'm watching things count down. <laughs> oh, the blood, the blood, the blood. Hallelujah. Thy angels, ministering spirits over your servant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. O Ramando Rabande. I'm going to pray a blessing that I believe the Lord showed me last night before I went to bed. Turn my Bible to Proverbs chapter 3, son. Everybody get your Bible or device out. I want you to stand on this verse. You in Fort Worth, the anointing is all over this nation and world right now. Bring it here to me, son, please. And you look nice. I don't care what they said about you. Proverbs chapter 3. Listen as I read this to you. Beginning with the fifth verse. You can keep playing that softly behind me. I like his piano player here. He's a nice person. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Everybody say, I will trust in the Lord. When I was younger, I knew a guy up in New York. He wrote a song. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in... Brother Utterback. I will trust in the Lord until I die or Jesus comes I will trust in the Lord I will trust in the Lord I will trust in the Lord until he comes <laughs> and lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him. He shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord. That means be reverent of him. Depart from evil. How many of you can lift hand and say, I do not follow after evil? Think about that. That by itself is a powerful deliverance. When you make up your mind, I'm not going to follow after evil. <laughs> it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. I looked up that word marrow last night. One thing I read said it's the blood factory where the white cells and red cells are made. And when they're balanced, you have perfect health and no disease can be in your body. Are you hearing me? When your marrow is right, no disease can be in your body. The white blood cells battle all infection and disease off and the red blood cells bring oxygen. But the Bible says you want to have that kind of marrow, you don't need a transplant. Just turn from evil and don't lean to your own understanding and follow God and he'll make your marrow work. 
and health to your navel. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. That's your tithe. I don't know why ha people have a hard time paying tithe other than either they don't understand what it is or they don't know it's the key to their blessing. It's either ignorance or fear. Never be afraid to trust God. Turn over to Proverbs 5. I put this here for my wife. Simply put, rejoice with the wife of thy youth. I went to bed last night. She says I did this. I don't remember. She says she was sound asleep when I reached over and rubbed her on her head and went back to sleep. I don't remember doing it, but she said she was awake from 4 o'clock till this morning. The Lord must have known she needed an anointing. Now, what do those two scriptures have to do with each other? How many want to have a happy home? A happy life? It starts with honoring God and not leaning to our own understanding. This past summer I was here. They were talking about by September. They would have a federal digital system in place and we wouldn't be using money. How many remember the news report? Well, the Lord told me to tell the people, if you'll give an offering of faith, God will stop the plans of man from coming to pass. If you use a credit card, it provides two jobs. When you spend cash, it provides 13 jobs, according to The Economist magazine. I try to pay cash. I want as many people working as possible. Amen. There is a trend to move away from cash because digitally you can be controlled. Like they shut the truckers' checking accounts down in Canada in 2020. That's what they'd love to do. You don't agree with them, whoever them is, they cut you off. Can't do that when you got cash. Are you listening to me? So I think of you people. Every time I pray, I think of Brother John, the church here in Fort Worth. I think of my son, his new church in Florida. I want to see all God's people blessed. But to do it, we have to take steps of faith in honoring God with our substance. That's Bible. I don't know what it would be for you, but my wife and I, we, we have an amount that we believe God for and I'll tell you a secret. I pray and pay my tithe before I get my money. And I tithe to the size income I want. And for 48 years, it's worked every single year. And this year, we went even above what we tithe. And I tithed on the increase as well. My point is, you can come in a meeting like this and miss the main thing that Jesus wants to do for his children. And that is, he says, I'll open up to you treasures and honor you back with substance. In one passage, he said, honor him. Then two more Proverbs over. He said, then he'll honor you. When I went to Bible school, they had what they call a golden bowl. Everybody that tithed brought their tithe down to the bowl. Then they received a second offering and passed the plates. That was for people who wanted to have an increase. That was my Bible school. And Brother John's. We were taught that the increase and the blessing 
is in the free will offering. But the curse is removed by paying the tithe. Two distinct offerings in your Bible. This morning, I want to challenge you to do something. You that are there in Texas, you're included. I want you to get ready to give the tithe. I want God blessed you with this week. But I want you to add to it a free will offering. Someone said, how much should I add? None of my business. That's between you and the Lord. But see what God will do. I had a yellow legal pad when I first started doing it. I started writing down each week what I did. But the blessings got so bigger, I filled the whole other half of the unexpected blessings. And I was still only about a quarter of a way down the sheet of paper with my tithe and my free will offering. If people could grasp a hold of this. Now, see, I've proven this personally for over 50 years. That's a half a century where I come from. God's never let me down. And he won't let you down. Do you think he loves me better than you? You're right. He doesn't. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't. How many of you want to see increase in your finances? I don't care if you're on social insecurity or what. How many know God's greater than that? Amen. Then lift your right hand. I want to pray this blessing. And then we're going to receive this special Thanksgiving offering. The tithe, that's the tenth. And then a free will offering for increase. Say, that's me, Lord. Say this out loud. Father, I will never lack for anything ever again. The rest of my life, I believe I will prosper in everything I do. And the spirit of increase shall come on me. Show me today what I should give as my free will offering. And help me to pay my tithe which belongs to you. Together, they will bring me into a lifestyle of increase. I believe it. If you believe it, say amen. I was in a meeting. They were receiving an offering for a First Nation elder, a chief, to buy him a car so he could go to all the reservations, preach the gospel. The man received it. He said, if you give God the biggest thing you got, God's going to bless you back. All I had on me was two ones and a $10 bill. Excuse me, a $20 bill. And I said, you're not getting my 20. And I, did, I wouldn't give it. I went down and gave the two ones. I went back and I'm sitting there. I felt miserable. So I said, I rebuke you, devil. You're not getting my $20. Then I got thinking, the devil doesn't want you given to get a guy to preach and get him a car. I didn't want to give it. They only left one person, the Lord. I said, sorry about that, Lord. <laughs> and I went back down and put the 20 in. And the preacher saw me come again. He said, God got you, didn't he? <laughs> when he said that, I want to take my two ones back, the 20 back, and whatever else I could get. But I smiled because I know the Bible said God loves a cheerful giver. I said, yeah, he got me. And after the meeting, this was under a tent. They turned the lights off. I was going out. And Brother Dean, an older man, came up and tucked something in my pocket. But there was no light. I couldn't see what it was. But I could hear the sound of paper. And so I ran over to one street light across the grass field. My pants got wet from the evening dew. And I reached in. I pulled out two $100 bills. And he had prayed, God, if people do it, give them at least 10 times if they'll give the biggest thing they can. 10 times 20 was 200. First, I got mad. If I'd obeyed God, I'd have had $202. But I didn't. But that's when I learned God does speak to us about our giving. And he will keep his word to you. I want everybody to prepare to give this morning. You that are in Fort Worth, get ready there. Kofi's helping us there. And uh, 
Sister Dallas, how do we give? I see nothing on the screens other than an old preacher. There it is. My goodness, you can RT, you can RT, you can pay the pal. You can do all kinds of stuff in this church. Crypto, I don't even know what that means. And I've never worked in a funeral home. Amen. You'll get that on the way home. Crips, they sell crips. Not talking about the gang. I was in Atlanta, a guy came up with a red shirt. He said, you for the Crips or the Bloods? I said, son, I'm for whatever you are. Amen. <laughs> he was Bloods. <laughs> then once you're ready to give, I'm going to have you stand. We're going to confess over this because we're about ready to go into 2024. Some of you have been battling lack or not enough. It's time to get over in the realm of more than enough. Stop robbing God. That's what the Bible says in Malachi. If you don't pay your tithe, you're robbing him. Do I have any robbers here? I'm waiting to say, oh, just one usher with his hand up. Amen. Oh, excuse me, sir. He's giving out envelopes. Amen. Hey, I asked. He had his hand up. Watch that guy. I won't have him hold the offering envelope bucket. Amen. Now, he's a good guy. We love him. Mm. 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 I could be singing jingle bells for all you know, son. Amen. I got a new home over in glory. Well, and it's mine, mine, all oh mine. Well, I got a new home over in glory. And it's mine, oh, it's mine, all oh mine. I see Jesus over in glory. And he's mine, oh. Yes, he's mine. Well, I see Jesus. He's over in glory. And he's mine. Mine. Oh, mine. I got thrown out of the church choir. Can you believe that? That's true. I wasn't mad. I wanted to go play football up the street anyhow. My mama found out. What's your problem? I said, they said I sounded like some kind of singer forget now and my dad was eating at the table he said as a matter of fact you do sound like him amen I didn't get whipped I thought I was headed for a whipping amen so since they threw me out I've been tormenting people singing my own song ever since amen well I got a new home over in glory well and it's mine mine all mine well, I got a new home over in glory, and it's mine, Lord, yes, it's mine. Well, I got a new home over in glory, and it's mine, Lord, yes, it's mine. Well, I got a new home over in glory, and it's mine, Lord, yes, it's mine. Well, I see Jesus over in glory. Well, and it's mine. Yes, it's mine. I, I was just pointing, sir. Come on back. <laughs> I was just doing this. And it's mine, Lord. Well, yes, it's mine. Well, I got a new home over in glory. And it's mine, Lord. Yes, it's mine. Well, I got a new home. Well, and it's mine. Well, I got my mama over in glory. And it's mine, Lord. Yes, it's mine. 
Well, I got my dad law. Over in glory. Well, it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. Well, they'll be shouting over in glory. Oh, they'll be shouting. Come on, clap your hands, play it. a new home. Got my exercise in. Praise him on the trombone. With the microphone on. him again on the trombone. Oh, oh, oh. Praise him on the guitar. Go ahead, son. That's what I'm talking about. on the keyboard. All right, singers, get ready. Well, I got a new home over in glory. Some of the greatest miracles we've seen are after we receive an offering to the Lord. I'm not saying you can buy a miracle, but I do believe when you honor God, he turns around and honors you back. We're going to finish today. I'm going to lay hands on everybody that needs a touch. That's why God made me a strong man. I said, that's why God made me a strong man. I'm waiting for my wife to shout yes. Oh, I'll start with this section over here. Ushers, help me. If you want hands laid on you, you need a miracle, you need healing. Move the line over to that far side and bring it this way along the baseline of the soccer field. You in this section, you want hands laid on you? Go down to the aisle, go down to the back and come around them. You in this section, go down this way, come behind them. And you over here in right field, just head to the back and get in the line. And we're going to finish by laying hands on the people. It's all right. We're going to let the Baptist beat us at the stake line. Will this do damage to this if I put a chair on it? Bring me that white chair. You sure it won't hurt it? Thank you. Well, I got a new home over in glory.
Well, it's mine, Lord, mine. Turn my mic up a little louder. I said, turn my mic up a little louder. Oh, yes. Leave it up. Everybody lift your right hand to heaven. I'm getting ready to start my 48th year of doing this. They used to do this when I was growing up in church, where on Sunday mornings they personally pray for the people. Some say, well, I don't know how you can do it when you get over a thousand or more. I'll show you how in a minute. Because it's not by might, nor by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. I'm going to believe under my hand, and you right there in Fort Worth, Kofi will lay hands on you. I'm going to believe under our hands is going to come the nail-scarred hand of Jesus. I've been doing this. My wife will tell you, come here, Bonnie. You can come up here and Sister Adalis. Amen. We'll need women. You and Sister Adalis will help me. I don't care if Dean and his wife come. The more the merrier. <laughs> but Listen. In Philadelphia, I laid my hands on a child that had crossed eyes. Her father's name was Larry. I met him at Teen Challenge when I worked there. And Jesus instantly straightened that little child's eyes. I've laid hands on people. My wife will tell you. One girl. Are you busy later? <laughs> One girl had no eyeball. And God grew an eye. Every time we'd go back. The eye got bigger, bigger till it yeah. filled the empty socket. There's a power that Jesus gave us, according to Luke, over all devils yeah. and over all diseases yeah. to cure them. You remember that time we prayed <laughs> so much? A woman had no ear. It was just skin. Right. And she came up to get her hearing back, but there was no ear. So I said, all right, Lord, here it goes. I put my finger there like there was an ear. When all of a sudden I felt my finger sink in her head. I thought, oh my goodness, I poked a hole in her head. But when I lifted her hair, my wife will tell you, God had formed a perfect ear on the side of the woman's head. That was in Florida. And there's still many people alive that were there that night. This gauze, white gauze, started coming out in the air out of her head. Apparently, they had operated so much that what they call proud flesh had grown over where the ear was. But the Lord took care of that proud flesh. <laughs> when that gauze come out of her ear, the deputy sheriff that was our security at the auditorium, he come up and said, I need to get saved. I said, kneel down right there, brother. And the guy working with me, Donnie Johnson, I heard him say, I think I need to get saved too. <laughs> This summer in Atlanta, we prayed for a girl that just had these fleshly appendages, no ears. And when we prayed, holes appeared in the side of her head. Not a fashion ear at that point, but she began to hear and speak. And her mother got saved standing right behind her that brought her up. That I got on film. What I'm telling you is, whatever your greatest need is right now, wrap your faith. Do this like you're doing something say I wrap my faith come on say it I wrap my faith around my greatest need and I will receive from Jesus Christ what I have need of you believe that now lift those hands again father I open this line for prayer let your angels be at work here ministering to the people they're ministering spirits Jesus put your hand under mine and I call you to remembrance when you came to me in this state in a field years ago let this be the service that everyone leaves healed by the power of God everybody say everyone shall receive 
You can sing anything you want, little sister, as long as it's not slow. But pick up the pace. I found out people come the same speed you sing. If you sing the doxology, we'll be here till tomorrow. Go ahead.
Ain't nobody touch me like Jesus. 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 Ain't